Hey everybody, it's Robin Robbins. Welcome to a special bonus edition of the Toolkit. We are going to be talking about the top five ways to use IT assessments for fun and most importantly profit. And since I think for all of us closing new sales is something that is very fun, I think we can say it's, it's fun as well. So um, we're going to be hearing from the guys at Rapid Fire Tools. You have Mark Winter, who is the VP of Sales on the webinar. He's going to be our presenter, along with Kevin Jones, who is their sales engineer. Um, I've also got a longtime client on the phone, Bob Coppage, owner of Simple Simplex IT. He's in the sort of Cleveland, Ohio area. And he's been very successful in using audits to close more sales. And I just want you guys to know that um, Rapid Fire Tools has been a very good sponsor of ours for quite some time. I'd even call them a partner, really. Um, they they come to all of our producers club meetings, or many of them. I think they've they've come to. I know they've come to several. I know that many of my clients use them to do the network audit, network assessment as a means for assessing, of course, a new prospect's environment and using the information found to close sales. And I know it's a big question a lot of you have is how do you do these audits or assessments, whatever you want to call them, health check, to, um, you know, how much information do you give the client? What tools do you use? And so that's what these guys are going to be talking about. So I'm very excited to have them here today. And I would encourage all of you to ask as many questions as you can. Um, please use the question area or the chat. I'll be monitoring it as well. So if you have questions for me, I, of course, will be here. But uh, these guys are really, really great at what they do, and you're in good hands. So with that said, Mark, I'm going to let you go ahead and start your, in, imparting your wisdom. Thanks so much, Robin. Uh, yeah, we're thrilled to to be here and working with you. And absolutely, we definitely consider um, you know working with you a a, a true partnership and uh, mm -hmm. love love being at your events and talking with everybody. Um, and Bob, thanks again for joining us today as a, a mutual customer of both of ours. So um, just very quickly, what we're going to talk today about. Uh, I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about uh, the top five ways that. Um, you know that we're told people like um, you, the service providers, use IT assessments in your business. Um, and then uh, we're going to have Bob Coppage join us. He's got a great presentation for you. Uh, you know, some real down-to-earth um, information. Uh, but then we're going to do just a, a little bit about uh, Network Detective, which is um, our automated IT assessment tool. And um, that tool now has. Um, four modules, and I'll get more into that a little bit later on, but there's one for performing general network assessments, one that goes a little deeper into um, IT security, and then uh, some specific um, modules and reports for Microsoft Exchange as well as uh, Microsoft SQL Server. A little bit about um, you know, IT assessments. As service providers, we all do them, or really should be doing them. And there's a, a ton of really good reasons for offering IT assessments to your prospects and customers. Uh, these could be you know, everything from general network and system level, and like I said, to deeper security exchange or even SQL. And when we speak with people in the community, the top uses of assessments range from you know, everything from lead generation to pre-engagement checks and onboarding, um, all the way down to regular use at um, all of their customer sites for the quarterly business reviews or whatever uh, regularity you do that. So I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes to touch on each of these. So when we're at trade shows, um, speaking with folks on the phone, one of the key things that, um, and it's no surprise, a key area of focus is that you guys are all looking to grow your business by adding customers. So how do you do that? Well, I mean, you're here with uh, Robin Robbins, obviously, so marketing and lead generation, of course. So along with good tactics, a good list, you know, powerful copy, you really do need a compelling offer or a call to action, something that's going to get that prospect to raise their hand and say, sure, I'm up for a sales call. Come on over. So let me ask you, have you ever Googled your competition? Um, you know, one of the things that you'll notice is that a lot of them offer free network audits or free network assessments. And how obvious is that? I mean, is there a better way to entice a prospect? You're offering a free, valuable service to them, while at the same time getting a chance to look under the hood and see what's wrong in that network so that you can highlight those issues and sell against it. And if you think about it, ultimately you would need to do some level of 
you know, assessment of the network anyway in order to quote the opportunity. So it's really just too perfect. And you know, now also do think about, uh, you know, now's really a great time to also perhaps offer a free XP migration audit as part of your lead generation. So performing assessments can be very time consuming and costly unless you've got the right tools. Hey, uh, you know, the right can tools I, that have, yes, right. Can I just jump in? I just want, you just said something that's really key about the XP, uh, sort of doing a migra an XP migration. Um, XP is really hot right now. I'm continually getting emails almost on a daily basis from clients that are going in and saying XP is going to die, obviously, and, and I think um, Office 2003 and so forth, and they are getting tons and tons of response from that. So just FYI, guys, if you're not doing an XP assessment, you're missing out on some huge market opportunities. Um, you know, I think the, it might slow down a little at the end of this year, but you better be ready to go in January, February. So anyway, just wanted to underscore that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Robin. Uh, you're mm -hmm. absolutely right. Um, you know, but as I was saying, right, uh, these assessments can really be very time consuming and costly unless you've got the right tools. Um, and you know, we think the right tools really should be non-invasive and leave nothing behind. You know, think about it. If you're prospecting and they're looking for an IT, outsourced IT, they've already got something, somebody doing that work for them. And they're probably not going to want you to tip them off that they might be looking around. Um, and it should be automated so that you can kind of kick off um, what we call data collection. Let that run. Well, you've got a chance to meet with the business owners, you know, discuss their business challenges, find out how IT is used, what problems they're having. Of course, build rapport, which is what selling's all about. Then, of course, any data collection really should be fast and problem-free. It should make you look professional and organized. Ideally, finishing up in about the same amount of time that your, you know, your sales meeting is going to go, so 30 to 60 minutes. That way, it's done when you're ready to leave. And the end result should be reports that present the information in a very professional, well-organized manner. And they also need to be fully brandable. Your logo, your company branding, um, but of course, you know, with your client's name, from you to your customer. Now, of course, what you're looking for then is a way to show that their IT is not being handled, perhaps, and as, as well as it could be. You know, look for poor configurations, um, internal or external security risks, et cetera. But if you are offering a free assessment or a discounted assessment, one of the things that, um, you know, you want to do, you, you need a leave behind that goes along with your proposal that provides good value, leaves a great impression of you and the work you've done, but doesn't give away all the details so that they or another IT company can leverage what you provided them. So whether or not you're using assessments as lead generation, and I really think you should, let's say you're ready to build your proposal for onboarding a new client for block time or fully managed services. You know, you really are going to need to do an assessment at this point because unless you're, you know, looking for trouble, you know, you can't really provide a good quotation to a prospect unless you know the technical makeup of the current network and systems. You need to know what you're going to be supporting, how many workstations are active on that network, what type of applications are they running? What's the makeup of the PCs? Are they new? Are they old? What operating system? Is there a bunch of XP out there that needs to be migrated? They can expect you to do that for free as part of your uh, managed services offering. You know, how much RAM are they, are they able to actually be migrated? So all this is going to give you an idea of the types of issues you're likely to encounter and how needy that organization might be. Factors that you need to know when you're building your proposal. And of course, how many servers, printers, network devices. And then, Think about Active Directory. Um, a lot more to grasp there. Is it set up properly? Is it well maintained? Is it a mess? Is it too simple for the organization or overly complex? What are you inheriting here? And then how secure is the network from the outside or from the inside? So performing a detailed assessment really is a necessary component of building your quotation and then, of course, building the plan to onboard them. And then if SQL or Exchange are part of the mix, you definitely want to include a scan of that as well to see how it's set up and being used in that um, environment. And you know, perhaps you're also doing an exchange migration or um, going to propose that. You really do need a deep level of understanding that a good tool can provide. Okay, so using assessments or onboarding is obvious. Uh, you definitely want to make sure you have a baseline snapshot of the new customer's network and system configuration before you bring them on. Since you do need to know everything about their environment, and communicate that um, to your help desk. You know, similar to what I just went over in the pre-engagement assessment, you need to know about all the assets you're going to be supporting, right? 
what they are, their age, the software, what's an Active Directory, uh, who's an administrator, all that stuff. And it's going to be true whether or not um, you're going to be setting up monitoring on that network. And most of you are probably using a PSA or ticketing system like Autotask or ConnectWise. So now you've got to get the information into that as well. And ideally, you want to be able to take the information from your network assessment tool and pre-populate your PSA with the information from the client system. And, uh, you know, there's direct import from our tool to ConnectWise and Autotask. And also, as Kevin will show you in a little bit, um, you know, there's an Excel report where you can, you know, save information to CSV and import it into others. So performing um, IT assessments, uh, whether you're doing these at prospects or existing customer sites, is often going to turn up the opportunity for new projects. You know, examples include identifying systems near capacity or old machines nearing end of life, like XP, and those turn into then, you know, prospective upgrade or migration projects. Um, or you might find Active Directory cleanup and propose that to fix things like group membership um, or finding ex-employees with logins still active. You know, I spoke with um, one of our customers not long ago. They ran a report against a large network, happened to have been a school system. And they found over 700 old accounts with logins still active on that network. So any of those you know, students could log in and create havoc, huge security risk. And something their on-site T is really supposed to have handled. So that, of course, led to you know, a very nice project for them, cleaning that up, and ongoing work. You, know, you might also look to identify in, inconsistent um, security policies across the network, or look for holes in security practices that need to be put in place. And then, of course, you've got um, exchange migrations as a project, whether that's to you know, Exchange 2010, 2012, or the cloud, a great opportunity for you. And having the documentation of the current environment helps you scope the project better. You know, you get the information on the, that you need on the mailboxes, distribution lists, mobile device use, and more. And, you know, you don't want to just do a blind migration. Uh, you want to have the information there and, um, you know, go through the distribution lists with your prospect or customer. You know, are the distribution lists correct? Don't go creating lists with bad data just to clean them up later. And then, of course, you know, the reports from the assessments do more than just help you find the potential projects. They really help you document the issue that you can then show to the customer. And they become then a sales tool to help you sell that project to your client and justify the costs. And, you know, consider running it afterwards as well. Right? Show that you're done with the project. You've got now the documentation on the updated environment. And that will help you show your client that you finished the work, help you get paid faster. And this is important, too. Um, you know, I'd say when I speak with people at um, the Robin Robbins events, we've got a lot of clients there. Uh, you know, one of the things they tell me time and time again, they use this to audit themselves. Um, you know, so I would, if you're not already doing it, I would encourage you to provide a regular health check for all of your customers. Make that part of your technology or your quarterly business reviews. Definitely is going to add value to the client relationship you have. And it's often something you might be able to charge extra for. You know, from a general perspective, make sure that um, you're not supporting systems that might have been added to the network without your knowledge and probably not even getting paid to support. Uncover issues that need fixing and identify and document areas where you can sell new projects that you can then discuss during your quarterly business review, just kind of what I just talked about on the last slide. And if you're not already doing this, think about adding a security assessment. You know, it's something you most likely will be able to charge more for because it's probably out of the scope of your current contracts with your customer. You know, consider this, your clients' networks, you know, and indeed their business are constantly at risk. And, you know, I'm sure I don't need to convince you that, you know, viruses, spyware, malware, worms are all a very real threat to your clients' network and business. And even the best antivirus and malware protection isn't perfect 100% of the time. So, you know, if there's a problem, a single user can be down for hours. If it spreads through the network, the results can be even worse. So by performing regular security health checks, and this is something that, you know, I'm told people are charging $199, $299 uh, a quarter for. So this is something you can add as sort of a managed security assessment or a managed security service. You know, you really can help your clients protect their assets, guard against downtime, help them sleep better at night. And the key here is doing it regularly. So, you know, running at one time is just the first step. You want to really do this on a regular basis because threats do change. Um, you know, you're also probably responsible for your client's email. Um, when was the last time that you really examined the setup of their exchange environment? Uh, you know, nothing worse than getting a, a 
fire rate call from the CEO because their email quit working, probably just because um, they reached quota. So there's a lot of things that you can learn and gather by doing exchange um, reviews. Same thing with SQL Server routine health check. Um, you'll see a little bit more about that from what Kevin says. You know, this is something if it's germane to your business, the ability to very quickly um, scan and get information on SQL Server and um, have a routine health check report that you can provide on a regular basis to your customers really elevates you from just an IT guy into the application level as well. So um, there's a lot that you can do, and all of this really does add value, um, allow, gives you the tools to sit down face-to-face -face with your customers, show them that you are taking care of their network on a regular basis. Because as MSPs, when we forget to do that step, so often you know, people do start looking for you know, other providers because they're not aware of all the good work you're doing for them. So let me switch gears uh, very quickly and talk a little bit about Network Detective. Um, Network Detective is specifically designed so that you can run what we call a data collector on your prospect or client network without installing any software. And that's, that's key. That way it's completely non-invasive in a prospecting situation. No registry changes, nothing's installed. It works very quickly. Uh, scans can run in as little as 30 to 45 minutes for smaller networks. Um, the data collector gathers the data, creates an output file you bring back to your office. You import it into our network detective application. And that's where you set up your branding, save your default settings. And once you import the data, um, set up the client info and generate the reports, really a click of a button. I'll show you that in a second. And really, it's easy to do. I talk with technically savvy salespeople all the time who go on site, run the data collector um, during their introductory meeting. So they're able to go on site uh, a lot of times without an engineer. It saves a lot of time for the, the MSP. You know, it gathers the data while they're you know, going through their interview, generating rapport with the prospect and doing what they need to do in that cell. So at this point, I'd like to um, introduce Bob Coppage, um, CEO, owner of uh, Simplex IT and um, you know, a mutual customer of ours. Uh, Bob, are you there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks, Mark and, and Robin as well. I appreciate the opportunity to talk. First of all, I should probably identify. I'm actually the picture on the left, uh, not the picture on the right. I'm sure there was some confusion about that. So. We've been around for about uh, six years or so. We were, uh, we are a managed service provider from the get-go, so we're not a rate fix or project group that then uh, migrated over to uh, managed service. We were set up that way to start with. Uh, blah, 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 this gives all the metrics as far as the size and all that good fun stuff goes. Two-thirds of our customers, and right now we're about 50 uh, companies that we have some kind of recurring revenue uh, agreement, whether it's monitoring only all the way up to uh, uh, all you can eat. Two-thirds of them have come to us, not because of a technical challenge or issue that they had, but because they had a poor relationship with whoever their status quo was, whether that be an internal source or a uh, uh, or, or a third party that was doing their service. And that was whether it be poor communication, uh, poor delivery of the services, uh, there just was not that relationship. And so one of the key things that we do, top to bottom, A to Z, all points across it, is we talk about the relationship. We manage the relationship. And we want to show and demonstrate that we're not, we're not like the other guys. Uh, and we've been fairly successful with that. And, you know, we do uh, monthly luncheon hours. Uh, we've been doing those for five years. We do a newsletter, none of which is selling, which is basically us sharing information. And that's one of the key things is, uh, from an IT perspective, a lot of us get buried in data. Data is absolutely useless, especially when you're talking to potential clients. Uh, a lot of the tools that are out there will just give you total dumps of event logs, of uh, WMI metrics, of numbers and buzzwords and three-letter acronyms and all that kind of stuff. Well, business owners don't care. Uh, the business owners are the people, the decision makers that we're talking to, the non-IT people. They basically want their stuff to work. They want to know that it is healthy, that it is working. So we have to take that data and turn that into information. Information has value. Data doesn't. And one of the things that we absolutely love from the network detective standpoint, God, it sounds like freaking infomercial, which, okay, but <laughs> is the fact that they do that in a very standardized way. 
So we can look at, and we actually had a situation uh, uh, earlier this week with exactly the same thing. There was a small manufacturing company where there was a non-IT person who was responsible for IT. We were able to show them that look at all the former employees that can still get access to your network. With very, very little investment on our time, on our part, because we simply used the tool. And it did so, it communicated it to the potential client in a very clear, concise manner with a pie chart, with a visual, here's good, here's bad, any questions. So we're able to take a lot of those convoluted, decoyed uh, types of questions or types of situations and automatically put that into a format that's deliverable, that communicates information. And especially when we're talking to uh, potential clients that you know, are coming off that bad romance with the former MSP, they never told us anything. They never shared information. They never did this. Well, here's 10 pages of reports we'd like to go over with you with this information. We're already showing we're the good guys. Okay? And the nice thing is, is that there are clients who have special situations, whether it be special applications, vertical apps, uh, you know, whatever, that we truly do need to take a look at while we're doing an assessment. This frees our time up with the simple stuff so that we can actually make the investment where it actually counts, where that customer actually needs some, some help. Um, so this works very, very nicely, and the fact that it's not invasive. You know, do no harm. We're going to come and we're going to gather information. We're going to gather data, and then we're going to convert that to information so that you can use it. It's very, very compelling. And from a salesperson standpoint, our salesmen can actually deal with the product because they know, you know, it's the same reports. So once we've gone through that learning curve, they can move on. What this has allowed us to do is to essentially come up with kind of a triage program. When we get a potential lead, we can, with a couple of questions, basically just size questions. Okay, which category do they run into? Do they run into a low level, which is, you know, a server and a couple of workstations? We've got, we can do that. We don't really need to do much of an evaluation at all. We're comfortable enough uh, with a few questions and uh, no problem. If they're a mid-level, okay, we want to actually do the on-site evaluation. We want to go through and we'll run the network detective, we'll generate the reports. If they're a high level, and this is, from our perspective here, this is an arbitrary number. You know, you decide where the value is. We actually want to then put in an RMM. We're a level platforms partner. Uh, we'll put in the RMM since we can just do that with the server. We don't have to touch the desktop there either. And we'll do that for a week or so. Then we can come back with a snapshot basis where we could say, here's the snapshot. Here are the reports, the information we have about your network. And then here's the day-to-day -day operational information we can give you. So we're giving you kind of a strategic look at first and then a tactical day-to-day -day operational look. And we can share both of those pieces of information with our clients. That means that within a few minutes conversation, we know which of these three categories a potential client is going to come into. Our, our excuse me, our office manager can immediately say, here are the resources we're going to need. Here's everybody's calendar. We're going to do it. And so on, the salesperson can contact and talk with the potential client and say, here, we're going to need three appointments or two appointments or just one appointment. Let's set them up in the calendar, make sure we've got the decision makers in place, and we can give you value. Okay, so it's, it's, it's a very streamlined method of dealing with an issue that, again, I cannot stress enough. We're actually passing on information that is usable in a manner that's going to be usable to business owners, which really is, it, you know, we differentiate against our competition, which is absolutely critical. Okay? What do we run? We run everything. Why? Why the heck not? So we have all of that information that's available to us, but then we take a look at the reports and we'll decide which reports are going to be the most, most valuable based on what we see. And I want to be real clear here now. We do not go in saying, you know, we're trying to scare the bejeebers out of them because they probably get that from the other guys. But what we can do is we can use that information to say, here's the risk. Here's why you should care. Here's why you shouldn't care. You've got an XP machine. That XP machine is, really, is in the front office. It's collecting email. It's web browsing. Oh, boy, you're going to be in trouble. That XP machine is out on the shop floor. It's connected to a piece of equipment that would cost $40,000 uh, 
to upgrade, and it doesn't do email, it doesn't collect, collect anything, we're going to be okay, but we need to watch it a little bit. Okay? We can decide based on the information that we get. And then we, and we're, we don't hold back. We don't hold back, and reason being, again, we want to differentiate. We want to be the guys. We share our information, and we literally tell them, if you're talking to other companies, if you want to share that information with the competition, it's okay for you to do this, but I ask you to consider this one question. Why can't they get this information on their own? Or why aren't they offering to get this information for you on their own? Because we're not selling that information. We're selling our services. We're selling our relationship to help them move forward. Okay? That's, and again, I want to be clear, that's our mindset. This is actually a, a true picture of a client who had a raised computer floor, and when we pulled off a couple of tiles, this was what, what was underneath. And what this doesn't show is that there was zero airflow underneath the floor because this was stuck, and they had no idea what any of the wires were for, what any of the cables were for. They were drawing power, and there was communication lights, LEDs going off, and the previous IT support folks had never communicated to, to them that any of this stuff even existed, and their network was exactly the same way. Bob, is this a real picture? This is a real picture. Okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. And, it, and it's been great because we were able to show the, the, the management when they said, wow, why is it going to be so difficult to fix everything? We were able to show them the picture and said, this is your network. This is just the physical representation of it. But that picture, that visual, that graphic, it was like, oh, okay, we understand now. And for us to be able to do the same thing where we can represent instead of let me show you a list of users who haven't logged on in 36 days. No, let me show you a chart which gives you a breakdown of the numbers. If you want the list, I can get you the list. Or we can, in addition to that, but that picture is worth a thousand words. So we're giving them a clearly defined narrative. Here's our delivery to you. Here is your scenario. We're going to communicate this effectively and efficiently to you without speaking down to you, without using TLAs, without using geek speak. We're going to communicate to you, and then we're going to offer a path out of it. But it's going to be a clear-cut path. And if you want more information, we will get you more information. If you want to just trust us, but we'll show you in a, a week or a month or whatever how much we've improved, we'll be able to do this because this is your copy. Hey, Bob, okay. a quick question that just came in. I'm just going to – there's some other questions mm -hmm. that have come in. I'm going to let Mark address the other ones. But um, he's, Jay is saying – this seems great for server-based networks, but a lot of clients are on work groups. Have you ever done this with a work group, or how do you handle that? We have not done it on a work group, but what would happen, and uh, I'm sure uh, Mark and company will be going into this later, you have to run the collector on each workstation, mm -hmm. and then you're good to go. You just get the same reports, the same information. Gotcha. Okay. And yeah, similarly... Go ahead. Yeah, you're exactly right, Bob. So you would run a network scan from any of the workstations that are on that network and then run, like Bob said, what we call a local collection. That data gets merged. So it's not like you've got to merge the data. It simply gets merged together. Um, and you get um, all the information in the same set of reports. Just would not have any information on Active Directory, of course. As a side note, you can also do that in a similar situation where there are critical uh, uh, devices uh, when those uh, workstations or servers that aren't communicating because of either WMI or firewall, you can run the same data collector on theirs and it will uh, add to the report. So there's yeah, multiple exactly. ways to get around these things. Okay, cool. And it's, they've added you know, the Office 365, so even if they're cloud-based on the email, you can still use this tool to pull the data. Okay, cool. Okay, and part of the challenge is that Every MSP or every service provider is going to sit across the table from that potential client and go, trust us. We're going to take care of you. We're, we care about service. We care about quality, blah, blah, blah. No one is going to sit across and go, we really hope to pay us a lot of money. We don't have to do much because that would be really cool. Mm -hmm. So how do you differentiate yourself? 
and providing the value. One of the two things we always listen for when we talk to, to potential clients, especially the higher up the food chain they are, is one, th one thing they say, it shouldn't be this hard when they're talking about their IT. And the second is, it should just work. When we hear those two statements, that tells us they want us, they need us, because they're looking for someone to make that aspect of their organization easier, which is what we're all about. Again, I want to kind of like sum up this, uh, summarize up this aspect of it. Two-thirds, you should know as an MSP, you should know why people want to talk to you. What, not only how, how or why they selected you, which is, of course, important, but also what drove them to that point in the first place. And like I say, in our, in our area, a lot of it, majority of it has to do with they just had a bad experience with the other guys. And it's kind of, kind of like, you know, the breakup. You know, we don't want to be the rebound MSP. Okay, we want to be the one who actually has that relationship, and they sit back, and they like us, and they move forward. And I will tell you, and Robin, I, I, I hate to admit this, this kind of goes against some of your, some of your recommendations. We have a 30-day out contract, okay, which is a great communicator with us when we're talking to these guys saying, hey, look, if it doesn't work out, we're going to let you go. And, and the fun part is, is that well over about two-thirds of the clients who have left us have come back. Okay, and the ones that didn't come back, honestly, half of those we fired them, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. But that's a side point. So we want to position ourselves with that we're different. We actually are going to talk with you. We actually, when we show up, we're not here to sell you something. We're here to partner. And to be able to add something in our initial offering that immediately adds value is incredibly compelling, especially when there is not a huge amount of time on our part to do that. Okay? And this is, this is kind of freaky. It almost doesn't matter what the report's on. What I mean by that is that it's the relationship building. The fact that we find, if we want it, if, if, if we find stuff that is absolutely healthy, we're going to come back and say, you know, actually things are pretty healthy. Look at this information. You know? And the other points you can kind of see in that aspect. So give us the insights, okay? We know low-hanging fruit. We know the risks that are, you know, the, the, the more obvious ones. We know that out of the way, you know, out of the gate. Opportunities. We still have, actually this year we have seen an incredible increase in uh, project work. And what we do is as part of the project work, and this is you know a lot of uh, Hyper-V in 2012 and all that kind of fun stuff, is we include a month worth of monitoring and we do the network detective and we tell them we're not going to charge you anything for this. We just want to make sure everything's going to be okay. And by the way, here are the results and you're welcome to look at it and take a look and enjoy. And so far in two thirds of those instances, we've at least walked away with monitoring. Because we were monitoring the new servers, but oh, by the way, we just noticed that your active directory is kind of corrupt. You might want to have somebody take a look at that. Okay? Um, one thing, a couple things we're, we're actually getting into now, because this is, it's evolving. Uh, and we're actually a little bit on the weird, well, on the weird side in many ways, not the least of which is my lack of PowerPoint skills. Um, but we actually have a couple of clients where we are SQL MSPs, where they already have IT departments, but we handle their SQL clusters, high availability, replication models, all that kind of fun stuff. And we feel that there's a great market out there for SQL, specifically SQL MSP. And the, the new module, which I think Merkel or these guys will talk about in a little more detail, uh, really, this is, this is going to be cool. I just got my hands on it earlier this week. So we're just actually we're going to do our first assessments over the weekend. Um, but part of what we're looking to do is we're looking to uh, actually have that annual review. So we make sure in the month of December that we go out and we have, actually we have pretty full cool shop keys, but we do giveaways uh, for our clients uh, and uh, we visit them in late, late November and December. 
and we're talking about actually putting together a thumb drive that has their network detective reports on them. You know, I haven't quite decided if we're going to do that or not, or how we're going to do that. But you know, so not only is it great as far as the assessment goes, but it's also great as far as uh, uh, deltas, what you can see. And I would also say that uh, it's, it's kind of like with uh, antivirus, no antivirus product. Uh, I think, Mark, you were, you were saying this. No antivirus product actually protects against everything. No RMM tool is going to report every specific aspect of it either. And most RMM tools uh, actually don't do great as far as what I would call business owner uh, presentations, which this does well. So it's it's just another it's another tool in the uh, in the tool belt to do that. Um, and I think that might have been my stuff. Fantastic. Excellent presentation, Bob. You're a natural. We. So, um, you know, you were mentioning, and this dovetails nicely into into this next slide. Um, and this is really important because I'm often asked, why would I need a tool like Network Detective if I've got um, level platforms or Kaseya or mm -hmm. Enable or some other monitoring system? So, you know, sure, you can install a bunch of licenses or even put a probe out there for a week or two. And, and sometimes it makes sense to do that. But what does that cost in terms of, um, you know, your license cost, let alone the time and effort? And if you don't win the deal and you've got agents installed, you've got to go back uninstall those to reclaim your licenses and, of course, get that stuff off the network. But, you know, also what happens when in a prospecting situation something's, something goes wrong? Uh, you know, seriously, if you go in and install software or put a probe on a network, something goes wrong later that day or the next day, who are they going to blame themselves, the current IT provider? No, you're the last one in there. You're kind of likely to blame you. You can get that opportunity to maybe go fix that problem for free. As I said earlier, Network Detective, and Bob said this too, Network Detective is completely non-invasive. You run the data collector without installing anything. You can even run it from a USB drive. You bring the data file back and generate the reports. You know, like Bob said, on the flip side, Network Detective is not going to get you performance-based metrics and statistics. Um, you know, your monitoring system, especially agent-based systems like, um, you know, Kasey or Enable, uh, are, it can be running for weeks or longer and really should be providing detailed performance reports. Um, but that's normally not necessarily appropriate um, in most cases for prospecting. And, you know, as Bob alluded to, there's still a really good reason to run network detective in, on your existing clients where you do have monitoring running. As typically, those monitoring programs don't perform any real ongoing analysis or reporting of Active Directory, uh, nor do they do external vulnerability scans or regularly look for open ports on an IP scan across the network looking for potential security holes. Uh, nor do they provide professional level documentation on things like network shares, who has access to what, um, and security policies. And none that I'm aware of do a deep dive into the exchange environment, let alone doing regular documentation sort of on the routine health of your, your client SQL servers. And Network Detective, using that regularly is going to do all that for you. And there's also a change report, which you'll see in a little bit, where you can quickly identify systems um, that you might not be charging for in your managed services, something that during your quarterly review you can kind of sit down and do the true up. So at this point, let me uh, turn this over to Kevin Jones, our sales engineer. He's going to kind of go through um, you know, how you can turn some of these reports into revenue, what to look for, and um, how you would use it. Kevin, you there? I am here. So, um, you know, again, Mark kind of walked us through the overall process of collecting you know the data. Uh, now it's a matter of okay, what do we what do we want to do with it? And you essentially break it down into two levels. You have means to leverage the reports from um, you know from a prospecting perspective as far as acquiring the business, and then also once they are a customer, it's a matter of how do we leverage the reports uh, to keep them a, a happy customer. Once you've completed the scan, okay, you've done the uh, the report build on your end, and you start to filter through it, uh, many, many items are going to pop up, and uh, it's, you know, uh, the shortcomings of the current provider, whether that be in-house or another MSP, uh, they will start to bubble up. And, you know, some of these items your client or, you know, prospect might be aware of, um, but some of them they might not. Basically, the, the minutiae at the, at the user and the computer level will all bubble up 
and uh, they really drive home one point, and that typically is that the current provider is, is not doing a good enough job. So what we have over here on the right is an example out of our users and patching report. Pull this up here. So we see the users. Um, you know, a few columns lower, we can see whether or not the, they are enabled or disabled. And then over on the far right, we can see the uh, notifications in red as far as the last login. So again, this is auto-generated um, and is available within the numerous reports that you're going to get out of the modules. But what you can then do is, you know, use this data to kind of correlate with, you know, okay, well, how good of a job is the current provider doing? And, you know, again, these are all of the users. And then at the another section, we have kind of a summary at the device level specific to patches, okay? And the neat thing about this section is not only does it uh, show you, you know, what operating system level patches or their issues or might be missing, but we can also report against, you know, more application-specific uh, items to more holistic means in which to communicate uh, what exactly the current state is for this prospect. And again, um, some might be small, some might be big, but they all essentially add up in the end. So one of the other issues in, in correlating this content and presenting your findings to the prospect is now you're moving into the territory where um, you're basically going about, okay, what's the exposure to risk that um, this prospect is facing based on these issues? You know, I mentioned antiviruses. Um, you know, all those small things basically arise um, from not properly maintaining a network. The machines can be compromised. The old user accounts can get into the system and access potentially sensitive data. Um, you know, the network might have vulnerabilities from the outside that could cause business downtime. So. There are a ton of risks that could be present, and they're going to vary from network to network. So right now we are in section more detailed, specific to vulnerabilities for the security assessment. Okay, and again, some of these items might be a big deal, some of them might not. But if we go down here, now here's a very uh, simple graph here. Here are the issues, and uh, what's the severity? And the neat thing is. So I'm going to come down right here, and it might be something as simple as you've got a port open, Mr. Prospect, that you need to close um, because it is a high risk. Okay, well, why is it a high risk? Well, items such as this will bubble up uh, within your reporting so that you can speak specific to that item and, again, um, hopefully present yourself as uh, reliable, confident, and more importantly, able to provide the information uh, quickly so that you have an opportunity to come back and uh, win the business. You know, and again, there are plenty of other items. You know, we, we spoke about kind of OS and uh, network layer items, but, you know, you could be application-specific findings, specific to, you know, maybe they have applications in there within their environment they don't want. You know, a myriad, 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 myriad of items. Um, but eventually what it's going to lead you to is, is the final point based on the, you know, the current level of service that they're getting from their provider, again, if it's in-house or external. So the question is, does the current provider know about all these issues? Because they're the ones supposed to be managing the network. And if they don't, well, then they're not capable of doing a quality job. And if they do know about the issues, well, that's scary, too, because then they're just willing to do a mediocre job. So either way, you know, once you presented your findings to the prospect, they'll know exactly where they stand and, you know, more importantly, who they can turn to if they decide to choose another MFP. So that's kind of the, the prospecting angle as far as utilization of the content. Now we're going to flip over and how, we, how you can use them uh, for customers, you know. And one of the first ones, first ways that you can use it is obviously for the onboarding of the customer itself. You know, Mark had touched on a little earlier with the uh, 
the integration points that we have with Autotask and ConnectWise. So the report outputs that we have, and there are application layer integrations so that you can speed up the um, <clears throat> rather tedious, you know, hand jam related tasks of populating content, contacts or issues or tickets or uh, configuration items. Or, um, you know, if you don't happen to use those uh, particular applications, and click on this Excel breakdown. And what we're going to see here, this is all of the content that's available to you in the Word documents. You know, the more, majority of the reporting output in is, is in a Word document format, but it's all built on the data that you will find here in Excel. So everything within the reports is going to be dumped out here. Then, if you so choose, you can use this to create your own custom charts and graphs, or uh, if you want to do something along the lines of doing a, um, you know, an automated uh, script to uh, populate users, etc. The data is here. You can use it however you see fit. Plenty of projects out there you can find. Obviously, it depends on what your uh, what your service of focus is. Um, you know, again, patch management, uh, security-related content filtering. Um, let's take, for instance, um, an exchange. You know, we had talked a little bit earlier in this dialogue specific to Windows XP opportunities out there. Yes, Windows XP is going out of support. But also, um, another opportunity out there in the marketplace is specific to another product that's going out of support for Microsoft, and that's Exchange 2003. There's a great opportunity out there because a lot of organizations are still sitting on 2003 because A, it's cheap, B, it works, and C, if they go anywhere else beyond and above the Exchange platform of 2003, uh, they have to upgrade their hardware to 64-bit. A lot of folks just don't want to do that, so they've been sitting on 2003. Well, now they have to move, okay? Okay, so you have options. They're either going to upgrade the box the latest and greatest version of Exchange, or perhaps they want to go to the cloud and utilize it for Office 365. And what we see here is a breakdown per mailbox. Okay? And the level of detail you can get specific to the security policies for this particular user, the distribution list, the quotas, etc. Everything is found within here. Okay? Now, why is this important is that, let's say, going back to the uh, decision that your customer is trying to make. Okay, well, do I upgrade to the latest and greatest version of the application in-house? Do I want to you know, go to the cloud? It doesn't really matter because the great thing about this piece is you can utilize the Exchange Assessment Module to establish the baseline of where they're at currently within their Exchange environment users, security, distribution list, et cetera, and let's say, okay, well, we want to go to Office 365. Great. You can then go about using this as a roadmap to define the target messaging architecture for Office 365, okay, and then run the scan against that data source. When I mean that, I mean you can run it against Office 365 before they go live, okay? So then you have an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, and you'll be quite certain both with yourself and also more importantly with your customer that you guys are ready to make the switch prior to go live. So again, it's just another means in which you can utilize the content to both drive awareness of your capabilities in delivering new projects, but also doing it with speed and efficiency. A variety of ways, again, you can uh, utilize this content. And again, we're speaking specific to all four modules, the network, the security, the exchange, and the SQL. The great thing I like about it is it, it, it kind of removes that out of sight, out of mind barrier when you go about doing these routine assessments. Because if everything's working great, fine, um, you know, a lot of times if that's the case and it's very hard for you to have tangible quality discussions unless you have something scheduled so they, the customer truly knows all the services that you are providing and can't provide. Okay? So one example, let's say if you are doing a routine health check, and you can just simply review all of this. I believe this one was not notated with the delta from a change previous. I'll go into that in the next report.
But basically, you can sit down with the owner and say, okay, here's who has access to the content within your organization. You know, something like good, bad, other. You know, these little things kind of keep you uh, either in the trusted advisor role because they know they care about you, care about their security and their data um, access policies, you know, or it can help you get to that uh, trusted advisor table. Let me take a look, show you another report here. This is the uh, the delta I'd spoken of. So one of the challenges when you are doing routine uh, assessments is, again, RMM tools, et cetera, plenty of them dump a whole lot of data out, okay? And it's weeding through that minutia that can get a little bit tiresome. Well, right here, let me scroll down a little bit here. What we can see highlighted in yellow automatically uh, is the delta essentially uh, <clears throat> for the last time that you established the baseline on your uh, first, second, third, whatever it was, um, your last routine assessment. So then you can show very clearly, okay, uh, what are the new users, new computers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So pretty, sim pretty basic, pretty simple stuff. And the last one is, you know, being able to articulate best practices as, a, as it applies to their overall organization and also what your service delivery capabilities are. And we'll click on this SQL Server Health Report. There we are. So, you know, back to what Bob said earlier, a lot of times it's a matter of getting at that executive summary quick and easy. Don't talk tech as much as possible. And, and you know, that's usually what the business owners are all about. And this, again, is the SQL Server Routine Health Assessment. I'm just going to scroll down here real quick. Of this right here. So again, this is a quick snapshot of the overall SQL environment that they have. Okay, nice, pretty picture. Here's the overall grading as we see it. Now, what's even better is if we scroll down a little bit more, we can actually see the specifics for the particular databases themselves. So let's say, you know, you could use this in both ways. Let's say you're going in from a prospecting perspective. You might not have a target-focused SQL managed service deliverable in your back pocket just yet, okay? But if you let's say you're prospecting and you run this scan, go down to one other database. Hold on, right? It's going to bubble up just basic standard best practices as you see on the right-hand side against each database, okay? Again, you. You might not have a SQL focus, but being able to show this to a prospect and also a customer's, you know, the value kind of states itself. And, and this is standard stuff. It's a matter of, okay, data, data and log file placement. You know, they're on the same drive. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. You know, what's the temp DB? It's not isolated on a drive. Okay, those are the issues, and there's your grading. So little stuff like that really, really means a lot when it comes to, again, keeping you at the uh, trusted advisor table or getting you to it. So I believe with that, I think that uh, I'm going to hand it back over to Mark. Mark, you there? I am. Thank you very much. Let me take uh, presenter again. But uh, you know, let me um, just kind of quickly summarize things. Now, as you have hopefully seen, Network Detective gives you the ability to run you know non-invasive scans on your client and prospect networks quickly and easily. And since the collection's automated, you're not going to accidentally forget to gather key information like you might if you're doing it by hand or with point tools. You know, I think Bob mentioned, you know, it's that consistency that you get. And as you saw um, with Kevin's information, you can customize and brand the reports with yours and your client's information logos. Um, everything is completely white labeled. And I'm not sure if we mentioned this, but all of the reports are delivered to you as Word and Excel documents. So they're the native documents. So you can add, edit. Uh, embellish reports, do what you need to. Um, and of course, you, the ability to populate, um, you know, contacts and configuration items in uh, your PSA, it can really save you a lot of time, reduce the chance for errors. And the whole point of this, of course, is to, uh, you know, close more new business and projects um, with new and existing clients. <clears throat> and, you know, and as I said earlier, definitely use a security module, of course, to develop a brand of security service. And, you know, I think you're going to find that the results will be a lot more satisfied, very loyal clients. And I've never spoken to an MSP yet who wasn't looking for a way to increase the retention and stickiness 
of their customers while at the same time creating a brand new and affordable recurring revenue stream. You know, I really do think it will help you find and close more project revenue whether you're providing managed service or offering that a la carte. How is Network Detective um, licensed and what does it cost? Um, but basically, uh, Network Detective is licensed as an annual subscription. Um, and it's for unlimited use at all of your clients and prospects. And we really do want you to run this as often as you see fit and get the most use that you possibly can out of the software. It's terrific value. Uh, a single module, the list price is $9.99 uh, per module. But we have both um, bundle discounts, so if you buy more than one module at a time, you'll save money. But you're part of the group that, um, you know, Robin Robin's uh, toolkit. And you need to visit that site right there, rapidfiretools.com slash 1311B29RR. Uh, either put the B and RR all in upper or all in lowercase. Either one will work. You'll get some terrific bun, you know, webinar special discounts. Visit that website. Um, your extra special pricing will be there for you. And all Rapid Fire tools have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So we want you to feel comfortable buying it, trying it out. If you're not completely satisfied, just let us know. We'll return your money.